the, the hard thing about marriage is your spouse's sin will always expose yours. And so some, her selfishness might, might expose your pride. Uh, husbands, love your wife like Christ loved the church. Look at the way in which he loved the church. Mm. He loved the church before the church can love him back. And when the church has nothing to give him, he mm. still loves. Mm. If God gave us a spouse that meant at every condition, we would never learn how to love unconditionally. Mm. How can you um, like know if the sex would be good if you're waiting till marriage? Like, what would you say? First and foremost, thank you so much for yeah. sitting here, bro, and g- getting into this me. conversation. I think that um, there's so much that I want to dig into. And I love the fact that I'm getting a chance to talk to you because you're someone who's extremely biblically astute and also someone like with a great with great character, with a great heart, and someone whose perspective that I respect and value. And I respect yeah. you as a man and I'm and I and I know that you got a lot of dimes that you're about to drop for this convo. <laughs> Hopefully, <That's> really- <laughs> man. Well, I appreciate you having me, man. It's it's encouraging to see a young man out here trying to um uh, create content for others and for and to build up the kingdom and so. It's That's dope, man. Applaud yourself, man. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Okay. So, uh, so my hope with this conversation is get down to um, a better understanding of what to expect in a marriage, right? So, mm-hmm. like, you hear a lot of different things. You hear people complaining about, yo, marriage is trash. Like, my yeah. life was way better before I got married, right? Yeah. And then you, and then you also hear people say, hey, she's my best friend. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. This is, you know, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. My life has gone all the way up since I've been married. Of course, there's who you choose that goes with that. Absolutely. But at the same time, I think not being married, I'm very curious on what to expect. Like, what should a marriage look like as a Christian? Like, what should we expect from a marriage? But before I even get there, you are, are a married man. Yeah, yeah. Been married, Christian man, yeah, yeah. golly man, out here, you know, walking in, you know, Jesus' footsteps. Yeah. What, uh, what do you, how did you um, meet Jackie? Like, um, just let's start there. Yeah, so me and Jackie, we met um, at a poetry show, so we're both spoken word poets. Okay. Um, and so, um, actually, Jackie's first viral video on YouTube was called My Life as a Stud, which she talked about coming out of the homosexual lifestyle. And that night, I actually met her. That's oh, the wow. Night, that's the night I actually met her on stage. And so, um, Lyrics is Islam was just a really big deal back in the day for poets uh, in the Christian community. Um, and uh, I met her, um, you know, looking at her after after she did her, you know, testimony and her poem. I walked up to her, and I was like, yo, your poem was dope. And I gave <laughs> her a hug. And that's the, that's, the, that's the night we met. And so, that was the night that my first video came out and was introduced to the world. So we literally was introduced to the world the same night because our videos went on YouTube. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of how we met at a poetry show. So, okay, so your poem was dope. Was that like, uh, the, what, did, did you know you was kind of going in, on, like, were you going on, on the friendship or was that like the, the game? Was you really like... No, nah, no, nah, I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't trying to pursue her. I mean, my, me and my wife, we were friends for three years before we oh, wow. interest, interest, interested in each other romantically. Like, oh, wow. we wasn't, I wasn't like... She was like the homie, you know, she's giving like relationship advice and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like she was like one of those. And so, uh, yeah, like we, I, I just, we just had an appreciation for each other's, you know, writing and art and we both love the Lord. And so it was just like a real genuine, authentic friendship, man. And honestly though, like, I think just from like my, um, experience dating and like kind of learning just from gleaning from men like you and, 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 and people who, you know, have been married. Uh, something I've heard a lot is just like the importance of being friends first and like having a foundation of friendship in a relationship. Mm-hmm. And what my perspective on this, and let me know how you feel about it, is that like lust, um, just like you know, like a, like your partner's only gonna be like like the like premium attractive person for so long. No matter how good she looks, you'll either get tired of her or with age, you know, we'll all age out. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And friendship Beauty is fleeting. Beauty is fleeting. And yeah. and with, like, friendship, my understanding is that, like, it's a more solid foundation that can last, like, when you're 50, 60 years old. Yeah, yeah, because you, you, you need a foundation. I think that um, people who, who get married for all the wrong reasons, when those things fade away, you have nothing to stand on, you know? And so um, I think that we have to um, ask ourselves, like, you know, why am I attracted to this person? 
I honestly think that one of the main questions we should ask somebody uh, or we should ask ourselves is if I'm if I'm going to pursue this person for marriage, how do this how did how does this person point me to God and how does this person help me fulfill the role that God has for my life? Mm. If we don't ask ourselves those questions, it's kind of like, man, you have to start asking yourself, is God really leading me to this person? You know? So so then okay, so then do you feel like you had um like that moment where you were like, God has downloaded to you, this is like the woman that you need to marry. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Cause it was um uh, long story short, um, I was dating another girl <laughs> at the time, and um, we were struggling to stay pure. And I wanted to please God, and so I told her, "I'm gonna give you, I want to, I want to give us a month to 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 separate, to pray, mm. uh, whether or not I'm I'm gonna pursue you or not." And in that month, uh, my wife Jackie couldn't come on my head, and um, the Lord begin to remind me of all the things that I pray for in a wife and everything that I pray for in a wife, God, like literally like begin to show me slowly, but surely she was it. Oh, wow. And so, did I, you know, and so then I started to question like, man, does this friendship that I have on my, have with my, well, name my friend, Jackie, <laughs> is this something more? And so I had to start to ask myself like, man, is this something more? And then when I started to ask myself that, it was like, yo, like, like God, which started to show me that this friendship that I that I that I've given you with Jackie it was not just meant to be just a friendship, but something deeper. And so, mm. uh, yeah. So then, uh, w being that y'all were friends, and then like um, went from being friends to like actually dating, like how how like how long were you dating? Because you already knew her pretty much, like pretty well before. Yeah, we dated for I want to say a year. Oh, okay. And then we were engaged six months, and then we got married. Oh, boy. so you locked it in. You yeah. locked. You said this is it. We we, we get to go. <laughs> so, I, wasn't, I wasn't waiting. This is word. So then, um, okay. So then you've been married what, like eight years now? Eight years, yeah. Okay, so that's okay. So okay, so you're very qualified to get to, to, to get in the conversation. So then, okay. So then, as a Christian, what? Um, and I understand this is a big question, but like, what should we expect out of a marriage? Like. I know it's a big question, but yeah, like, like what if you just kind of had to describe like what you think marriage should look like? Because there's people who haven't had marriages to glean from. How would you describe it? Like, yeah, man. So to to give you the the the, the initial biblical answer, <laughs> right? Okay. And then kind of go into more practical things. Yeah. A marriage is a picture of the gospel, right? And so Ephesians five. Let's us know that, you know, it says husbands love your wife like Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, um, you know, having uh, so we can present her faultless and without without rock, spot or wrinkle. Then it says um, wives submit to your husbands as to the Lord. Right. And so I think what that basically means is that, man, like marriage looks like a husband sacrificially laying his life on the line to love someone that God has called him to. Right. And it looks like a, a wife submitting to that love, not submitting to rules or I think you're going to touch on that as well. Mm -hmm. Not submitting to rules, but submitting to a, a, a sacrificial leader, you know, who loves her selfishly um, to give the world a picture of the gospel. And so I think initially that's 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 my first like the biblical answer. Of yeah. what A marriage would look like. But to be real, marriage looks like work. It looks hard. It's hard. You know, it's, it's, I tell people all the time, if God gave us a spouse that meant our every condition, we would never learn how to love unconditionally, mm. which means that, that marriage is, um, it's work. Uh, it's, it can be tough. Uh, it can be strenuous at times, but it's beautiful, you know? And so it's all of those things. Man, so I, I really want to dig into this, though, because there's a lot that's being discussed. Okay, so, yeah. so like, the work, right? So what's interesting to me about the work of marriage is, see, I'm a, so I'm just going to talk about myself. I'm a fixer, right? So, like, there's, there's not too many problems I'll look at and say, I can't solve that problem, right? So, like, if I'm in a marriage that, is there a point, where, like, if I'm in a marriage where, like, I see problems, is there a point where, like, the work is, like, out of boundary right like where it's like this is this is not normal work in a relationship this is actually like not 
you know what I mean? It's a, yeah. you see where I'm going. That's that's a really good question. That's a really good question. I actually have have mentored young men um, about this particular thing, and uh, I, the reason why I was able to mentor men about this particular thing so well is because I've been through it. Okay, burger, bro. So, so I'm a fixer as well. Yeah. Um, and. I think one of the main, it, hear me when I say this. Okay. <laughs> I think one of the main um, mistakes that men can make is going into a marriage thinking that they can fix every single thing. Mm. And the reason why is because we're not dealing with a project, we're dealing with a person, right? That's complicated, that's nuanced. And so to give you some examples of my failures when I first met, we got married, mm. um, I'm a fixer and I'm also a verbal processor. My wife is was was was, was um abused growing up. Mm. And she she shut down when things got hard and rejected me when she was scared, right? And my main thing that I wanted to do all the time was no, let's sit down and fix this. But right. God had no, to yeah. sh- but God had to show me, man. A part of being a leader in a marriage is not you trying to sit down and fix this, but how much are you resting in me to allow me to? Mm. And, you know, and so I think what God often is trying to encourage men to do is to trust him for leadership, not trying to be everything for their, for their, for their spouse and for their family. Word. And so one of the things that I realized early on in my marriage is that a lot of my fixing seemed to become strenuous on my wife because my wife felt like she could never be right. You know, I was always trying to correct her behavior, correct the things that she was saying, correct the things that she was doing. And in actuality, I became more of a Pharisee to her than Jesus. Yeah. No, And, I, I, and so, like, yeah. I'm not saying you're... You, you're doing that. No, I mean, I, I have done that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I, so I know what you're saying. So, man, like, it's just, and so when God, like, yeah, when God, like, showed me, like, it's 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 not about fixing. It's about, it's about relationship. It's about allowing her to grow. It's about teaching me, teaching you how to grow. And then we, we just start to grow organically, and it got way better. So, okay. So then, all right. So I think then, like, as men, or, or maybe even women listening to this, you might think, okay, well, then, all right. So if it's all this work. Like you described, you talked about the beauty, right? What's beautiful about it that makes the work worth it? You know what I mean? Like, man, because on the other side of hard, it's always beauty. You know, like I think that a, a lot of times people want love, but really, like, like you become, you really become more, more in love when you've been through some things. When, you, right. when you say, man, I, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't been through this, we didn't got through this, and we still here loving one another. Um, because you know, that, that initial love is just kind of like, and I'm not saying that every marriage is going to be like super, super difficult and you're going to want to lead. Like, I'm not saying that every marriage is different. And so I'm not trying to speak ignorantly for all marriages, but what I am saying is that when two people come together and they become, uh, married in close proximity, there is going to be friction at times. It's just, it's just natural. Right. And it's just like, and so how you are willing to work through that love will determine how much you will grow in love together as time goes on. And so I, th- I think when you see, when you see people enter into marriages, I think you started to see that love progress, like, like decline for one another because they con- they came into marriages with all of these empty expectations mm. and nobody really prepared them for the real. And so like, so when stuff hits the fan, their world is broken. You know, and so I, I just think that we have to prepare people better. So then we have like, okay, so like these are expectations, right? So like you have like, we watch movies, like you see like the rom-coms, you see all these different things where it's like, you can almost have like a Disney Channel perspective on marriage, right? Where it's yeah. like, um, yo, once I'm married, like, you know, it's going to be, you know, it, like it, amazing. And like, I guess what I'm trying to get into, what are some moments, right, where, like, being married, where you really sat with yourself and you were like, wow, like, yo, this marriage stuff, this, this, this marriage stuff is really, this is really it. In comparison to, like, being single, you know, there's that, that, that new girl feeling, 
when you single, you like, all right, just got just got the number. When you say, wow, this is really it, are you talking about being good or difficult? I, being I good, being good. Gotcha. See, cause, you know what I mean? Like, because like I. We know I, I I know the the dating uh, what good feels like you know what I mean where it's like oh wow we just got off a date we really vibed or um, you know what I mean so the first two years of marriage <laughs> we didn't like each other whoa <laughs> I'm just being honest we just we, we didn't like each other but we, you gotta break that down because we we were friends for three years and then me ignorantly believing that the transition from friendship to marriage was going to be just easy. And um, what I didn't was I, what I wasn't prepared for was her becoming guarded and shutting down with me. And so I think that we have to understand that women, we think that we know a woman, but a woman's love for us grows in stages. And so mm. you think that your you think that your girlfriend loves you. Wait till you engage with her. Wait, wait, wait till you get engaged with her. Wait till you say, I do watch what it does to her heart. And you're you're saying it it, it gets better, right? It, it gets better, <laughs> but 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 I think that I wish churches will prepare men for different types of women because mm. my wife, her love for me grew, but also her guardedness for me grew because she was abused, and so because she was abused by man, like her but her love for her, me growing, literally made her afraid of how much I can hurt her, and so she closed down because of it. She was like, no, I'm in a I'm like I'm now I'm I'm as closest to you as possible. I love you more. And now I feel the need to protect myself more because you can hurt me in ways that you couldn't hurt me when we were engaged or when we were dating. And so I didn't I didn't I wasn't prepared for that. And so she shut down. And so when we were dating, you know, I would say, let babe, let's sit down and talk. And, you know, she be more willing. When we were married, let's sit down and talk. I don't want to talk. Mm. You know, and so it, this friction started to happen. And so what, what 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 happened was when she began to reject me in those ways, I wasn't mature enough and humble enough to not be prideful. And so now I'm prideful because you're not letting me lead like, you know. Yeah. And so God was doing the work in her, but he was also trying to reveal something in my heart. And that is I'm using this to teach you how to love sacrificially. To teach you how to love in a way that the world does not teach you how to love. And when you think about Ephesians 5, the scripture that I talked about when it says, yeah. Christ loved, uh, husbands, love your wife like Christ loved the church. Look at the way in which he loved the church. Mm. He loved the church before the church can love him back. And when the church has nothing to give him, he mm. still loves. Mm. And so in the same way, Jesus was, Jesus was encouraging me, your wife doesn't have anything to give you at the moment. And your wife cannot give you anything back. And so, can you love like me in this moment? So, I hear the maturity in that statement. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, but, and, and, uh, and, I, and I could definitely see myself um, going the prideful route that you, that you said you, you might have gone initially. Yeah. yeah. But then, but I guess like, so then what was in it for you during that time? Like, like or, or, or if, even for the both of you if, you, if you both didn't like each other, what was keeping it even you know what i mean like what we loved god and we loved each other okay so it was okay okay because it's the difference between loving somebody and liking them mm. that, no that's facts you know and a lot of times this is a hard truth but a lot of times we don't like somebody is because they're revealing something about us in our own heart mm. it's like we, we gotta we gotta be real about that it's like no like like in a marriage when it's, it, it's, how can I put this? Break it down. In a marriage, someone's sin, the, the hard thing about marriage is your spouse's sin will always expose yours. And so some, her selfishness might, might expose your pride. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And so like, <laughs> and, 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 and her pride might expose your selfishness. No, yeah, and, and even in, in my relationship, I can I can relate with that. It's almost yeah. like um, a mirror to your faults. You know Absolutely. what I mean? And it's like you can choose to go low, or you can be like love, like Christ loved the church. At yeah. least try. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, you know, you know what? You know what, what turned my marriage around was me stop being so pharisaical in my in my approach, like being like this Pharisee who just always caught her caught up on a sin. 
And I was praying one day and the Lord was like, whatever you want your wife to be in your marriage, you have to display. So if you want humility, display humility. Because if you don't display humility, you have no right to call her out on pride. Mm. And so if you don't display humility in those times when it's hard, you leave her with an excuse. And so it wasn't until I began to uh, humble myself in the hardest of times where it created another mirror for herself and said, like, instead, so instead of, instead of like her being selfish or her being prideful, activating my pride and, and giving her a reason to continue in her pride, like, okay, you mad, I'm mad, whatever. But it's <laughs> like now when I'm humble, it's kind of like, dang, this man just keep humbling himself. And now, you know, I gave her a mirror. And so I remember the day she was saying, I got tired of like you being the only one being golly and apologizing. And I was just like, I don't want to be scared anymore. I want to walk by faith. And so like, and we begin to grow. And then mm. also what that did was, I think it gave her, um, it gave her room to grow. Cause I wasn't over her trying to force her to grow. But my, my patience and my humility that I had to seek hard from the Lord allowed me to step back and allow her to see, man, this dude is being patient, he's being loving, and he's giving me the room to come out my shell. Wow. And then it just it just got better. Honestly, like you this is really feeling like therapy for me right now. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but but um okay, so then like what I'm also hearing is marriage being honestly the op an opportunity for you to really grow in your um, God, Jesus likeness. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And, like, and that to me actually does sound like almost a perfect environment to do it because, I mean, you're living it's, with that person. <laughs> it's the most perfect environment. You know what I mean? Tell and me. like, you're good. And, and if you want uh, uh, like a happy home, you, you're a force to deal with yourself in so many different areas that yeah. you, ge you genuinely become a better person and a better man. Through the process. Yeah, absolutely. And that honestly, but that's a great thing though. Like I, I think like um if like if someone were to find a friend like you did, um, marry them, get it, get it, like challenge themselves within it and grow, I can see the beauty in that. And that yeah. makes sense to me. Like yeah. that yeah. that definitely makes sense to me. Sure. Although like I think the attractiveness of it is it it it, it is not as like appealing. It like it's more it, like I think but that's probably a good thing. You know what I mean? It's like more sobering if I'm thinking mm. about it. Like, yeah. wait, like, all right. Like, it's not like um, Disney Channel anymore. To be honest, I'm looking at it like, all right, like, this is serious business. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? It it's is. A, it's, a, it's a, big, a big thing. Nah, for real, it, it is, man. It's a real big thing. And I think that um, I, I just want churches to prepare people better. You know, um, like literally, I think leaders have to prepare people to like, man, like really get to the nitty gritty of like, you know, what a woman or what a man has been through. It's like, how can we work through these things and prepare you? Because the thing about marriage, bro, um, you can never be fully prepared because what, 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 what gets you prepared for marriage is actually doing it. Mm. But somebody cannot be prepared. Mm. You can never be fully prepared, but you some. It, but it's, it, it is possible for you not to be ready. All right, so there's just a, a few things on the preparation, then, right? So like, um, a couple of things, and maybe some of these aren't even biblical. They're just like just perspective things. How do you feel about like living with your partner before you're married? Like, do you think that's something that like no. you should do? No, no. Break it down. Why not? And before you do, is this Preston or is this Bible? Man, I think this is a little bit of both. Okay. A little bit of both. I think that, um, so I think the Bible, um, when it talks about a when a husband finds a wife, it says that a husband, that a, that a man should leave his father and mother and, and go and cleave to his wife. And so when you, when you, when you, when you study that, it, it literally means in the, in the context of a union. And so it, it talks about when, of a family, a man should leave his family that he kind of grew up with and to go and to, you know, to, to join this union. Mm -hmm. But I also think that um, it's, a, it's a wisdom thing uh, because I think that, <clears throat> I think that um, when the Bible talks about guarding our hearts because it is the offspring of life, really what that means is like, like, not putting yourself in a in a position to be tempted. That's all it means. 
And so, like, the Bible talks about uh, uh, can a man put fire in his bosom and not be burned? I don't know too many men. Huh? I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, you know? And so, and so, like, a lot of these commands and a lot of these demands for Jesus is not him saying, because obeying Jesus is not just not sinning. It's listening to all the wisdom that he's giving you so that you won't even be tempted to. Like, and so, you know, a lot of the old Old Testament laws, they, they were wisdom. They were thinking, like, not to eat meat with blood in it. It's like it wasn't sin, at, you know, in, it, in itself, but they didn't have refrigerators back then. <laughs> and so Jesus didn't want them to get sick. Yeah. And God didn't want them to get sick. And so, like, you know, it's, this is wisdom that God has given us. And so even if we kind of disobey this wisdom, that it, 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 it is because all disobedience to God is sin. And so sometimes people think, oh, I can live with one another and not fornicate. But it's like, are you putting yourself in a position to want to? I also think that yeah. I also think that it's it's um it's not always beneficial to act like a married couple before you're actually a married couple. Mm. And um are you saying that because it it could get so real that if there's a, if there is a door to leave you'll leave or no i just think that um uh, i think that one i think that we should respect the honor of a union more of like like really saying i do and 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 you know and what that what that entails but i i also think that um that you can give the devil um you know a head start you know, in your relationship, if God, especially if God has called you to the people. And I know that God can do anything. And I'm not saying that everybody who has took this role, you know, is doomed. Yeah. But what I'm just saying, though, I don't think it's the wisest situation. Okay. So then, uh, so did you and Jackie wait till marriage? You don't have to say. <laughs> well, to wait till marriage to have sex? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My, my wife is gay. And so she, she she wasn't excited to have a uh, sex with men. <laughs> uh, oh, like, that'll like, be a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, we I took my wife's virginity uh, on our marriage on our marriage mar uh, marriage day. But oh wow, uh, you know, I mean, we 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 wasn't all the way pure though. You know, we still I still we still fell and did you know things fondling with one another and stuff like that be real but no we waited we waited and i think that also too we one of the reasons why we waited is because we had a really great community that held us accountable um i think that's important no oh, yeah and so then um okay um just r real quick because i think sometimes and and um it's rare to hear from someone who's actually waited to for, to answer the, to ask these questions but sometimes i think people say how can you um like know if the sex would be good if you're waiting till marriage like what would you say <laughs> that's a good question um uh, depending on who you are it might be trash <laughs> right and to be honest with you like uh, my wife never been with a man before and so she wasn't going to be you know for me what my ex-girlfriends was that's just the reality of it but we got the whole life to figure it out that's, that's that's the beautiful thing about marriage and if you if you and and that's the reason why fornication is so dangerous because uh i wish i can i wish i had the opportunity to go into a marriage pure because i don't have nothing to compare my wife to and so that's the reason why like when we see God and his wisdom and his his design for marriage. We see that he strategically designed it for a reason. And when we have sex outside of marriage before we're married, it 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 corrupts something that's supposed to be beautiful. And so, but God is a restorer as well. And so one thing that I tell men all the time, especially young men that I'm that I'm discipling, is man, like you're gonna you you're going to initially probably compare your wife to sex that you had in the past. <laughs> but if you're patient and if you don't, if you're, if you're mature enough to wait, your wife can become everything that you wanted more. And would you say that on the opposite side too? So, Cause I've heard, I've heard women be, you know, like say, Hey, like, how do I know if you're going, you know what I mean? Put it down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No, nah, like, like you have, you have, 
one I tell I tell men all the time, be humble. <laughs> be humble. What you mean by that exactly? Don't think that you finna go into marriage, I'm finna destroy this, yada 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 yada. <laughs> because listen, dog, listen, I'm telling you. It's about it's about learning the woman's body. We don't we don't like 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 one every one woman is not the same. And so you the same, but she's she's different. That's facts, right. no yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so like learning what learning a woman's body is so so important and so i i had a young dude that i used to know <laughs> and he just thought that he was like god gives to to a woman in a, in, a, in a bedroom and then a year and a half later came and then you know his wife you know sat down with us and was like yo i've been faking all this time like you don't please me and he was broken because of it you know oh, what i'm saying tough, and it was like but now but no but now though they have a great sex life because they took the time to learn. And after he got over his pride and after he stopped having pity parties, he was like, what am I doing wrong? You know, and that's what marriage is. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we want to help for everything else, but our pride as men want us to act like we going into this thing as experts. And it's like, no, like, learn what, learn, learn what your wife like and vice versa. And so, like, I don't know. I just think that you don't have to worry about, like, things initially in your marriage that you have your whole life to figure out word and I, I think that's my perspective on it too i think that some are maybe just worried that like it'll never get there <laughs> it'll probably never get there because y'all don't because you don't want help or you don't want to reach out for help so yeah. yeah all right so then okay so then what about like so back so that's the preparation but back to the marriage back to in marriage do you think like gender roles like are real and, and are gender roles biblical um absolutely okay yeah absolutely i think that um they're definitely biblical um logically it's just speaking logically okay right uh god has created us differently and so um if gender roles were not a thing we would be the same <laughs> that's just that's just logic right that is logic i see okay yeah. okay yeah 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 and so like i think uh, when we look at the design of man and when we see how God created Adam and Eve in the garden, he creates Adam from the dust and then he he allows Adam to name all of these animals. And then the Bible says that Adam looked around in the garden and he saw that every animal had a mate suitable for them, but he didn't. And so the first time the Bible says something is not good, right? The Bible starts in Genesis by saying, uh, God created the earth and said, this was good, this was good, this was good. But the first time the Bible says something is not good, when he says it is not good for man to be alone, mm. I, must cre I, I must create, you know, Eve. And so when he created Eve or whatever, he, you know, you, you know how he did it. He put Adam to sleep, you know, took out his rib and all of that. He creates Eve and he creates a, a, a human being that is strikingly similar but at the same time, distinctly different, right? Mm -hmm. The Bible says to help him as a helper. And so when God gave, you know, um, Adam um, dominion over the garden, he says guard over it, which means to tend, to work the garden. He says at, like Eve will come and, and, and assist you to help you tend over this garden, right? Oh, he said that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. No, Abs yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And when notice how this is this is very important because the Bible is, is so intentional. Notice how when God created Adam in the garden and he gave Adam all of these commands in the garden, he gave it to Adam before Eve was even created. Which which lets us which, which lets us see that God is calling Adam to hold the integrity of what he called them to do together, to, to lead her in that. And so when, when God creates Eve, he does not com re repeat these commands to Eve. He doesn't say, mm. he doesn't say, he doesn't say, I told Adam and I'm telling you to attend over the garden. No, he, he entrusts Adam to hold the integrity of the, of, of, of the garden, which was essentially their home, right? To, 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 to do. And so, and so that's why I was so problematic when Eve sinned in the garden, 
right? When we meet, when when Eve listened to the snake, and uh, and ate from the tree of the God, knowledge of good and evil, and God came to Adam and said, you know, what have you done? And they hid because they were scared when Jesus was walking towards them in the garden, and and uh, and notice how uh, Adam says, the woman you gave me blamed it on her. <laughs> the woman you gave me gave me this fruit, right? Uh, and God went to him first. She ate the fruit, and, and it says, Eve ate the fruit and gave it to her husband. God came to him first. Mm. Mm. He came mm. to him and spoke to him. You don't even see this exchange between God and Eve. You don't even see this biblical exchange. You see God coming to him. Why? Because God entrusted him to uphold the integrity of what of, of, of what he initially commanded her mm. them to do. Interesting. The command wasn't even given to Eve, not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He told Adam that before he created Eve from her his side. And so we see that gender roles is are biblical. This is the this is this is the this is the kicker though. A lot of people think that they don't because they're not looking at God's original designs for gender roles. They're looking at how much they, the world has distorted them. Mm. And they think gender roles is a man telling a woman what to do and when to do it and how to do it and a woman having no voice. And so the Bible did not tell Adam to lead his wife in a way that like he makes all the decisions. He said, no, he told, like, he's literally saying, I want you guys to work together, but I want you to lead in this work. Mm. And so, and so that doesn't mean being domineering. That doesn't mean making all the, 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 the decisions. Yeah. You know, but that just means leading, you know, lovingly and sacrificially. So, and so what I'm, what I'm really hearing too is like, from what you're saying, it's a, I guess it's really saying that the husband is really just like the first line of defense where like um, somebody like it, it like it needs to be held accountable for the good and the bad of what's going on. If somebody were to break in this house right now and the whole family were, were, were murdered, God forbid, then I would, or the husband would probably be the, the first person to be at blame. And in the same context with, the other aspects of life. I mean, is that like a good way of looking at it? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it is. I think it is. I tell people all the time, um, one of the first things I, I learned about leadership is, is when I worked at Radio Shack, um, <laughs> back in the day, I used to sell cell phones. Um, so we had like, we sold AT&T, T-Mobile, and um, I think um, for something, Virgin Mobile, <laughs> some Boost Mobile. And I became really good at it. And this one was on commission. I was on commission base. And I was like the, like not to brag. I was kind of like the, <laughs> the, soup, the superstar of the store. I sold so many. I sold, you know, I sold so many like cell phones. And I would like sell people TVs and stuff like that. I, I, I made it. was a, nice with it. I was nice with it, right? <laughs> and so when everybody came into the store, everybody thought I was the manager. Everybody thought I was the leader. Mm. And my boss allowed me to make a lot of decisions because I was so good, right? And at times I was like, man, I'm kind of leading this store. <laughs> but when a DM came, mm. the district manager came, I never had to answer to him. And that, and that, that's when, that's when I, the re reality will always set in. I'm not the leader of the store. And so, and so what I'm doing is I'm helping her. I'm helping her make the store better. And, and she's not being domineering and, and like she's letting, and so what leadership, what real leadership is, is not, not being domineering over a wife. That's what men get, 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 get it twisted. And that's why some people try to stray away from it because it's like, I don't, we don't have to do it. It's like, no, 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 no. A real leader allows people to thrive in their roles without feel threat, without feeling threatened. My wife is a, my wife is an amazing speaker. She has gifts, a lot of, a lot of gifts that I don't even have. Right. And she does it better than me in a lot of ways. Yeah. And so I, a real leader lets a person strive in their, in their role. But when stuff hits the fan, when God comes and, and holds us accountable, I'm going to be the one. Like that district manager, 
I'm going to be the one have to talk to the district manager. Bro, <laughs> you know I honestly saying? think, though, it's Brandon, though. Like, I feel like the husband role, like, needs to be, like, a little more esteemed then. Like, because what you're describing is, like, a very, like, nuanced, difficult. What do you mean esteemed? I think when people look at husbands, they don't understand. They don't see what you just described as, like, what that person is doing. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, I think absolutely. That, and, but I think there's a reason for that, though. Mm. I think a lot of people are not doing it. I think that a lot of people are doing it the wrong way. You either have, because of sin, and sin original, like distorted the original design of what a, a wife and a husband look like. You either you either have men on two sides of the extremes. You have a man that's extremely domineering and think that leadership looks like making all the decisions and being and, and take and stripping their wife's voice away, or you have men being like men like Adam still. Who is extremely passive and allowing their wives to make all the decisions and have no, and they have no voice, and so, like the well Holy said. Spirit, is commanding us to walk in this in this like this beautiful balance that Jesus walked, this 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 being a gentle lamb and a lion, yeah, um, this being a leader that doesn't um, hold people back from thriving that he's leading, but he allows them to excel and to, he, he nourishes them because real leadership is, 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 is about nourishment. It's like, how are you like, it literally says, I wish I could pull it up. Ephesians five. It says having washed her by the, by the, like with the water of the word. So talking about like nourishment and like, and so we talk, we, we think about men being, uh, I mean, woman, I mean, women being, nourishers well before god even created you know or get given 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 us a wife he called for the man to be the nourisher first it's, he wants us to nourish our wives in the way that you know what i'm saying so i said all that to say this that real christ-like leadership is about sacrifice mm. it's about sacrificial love and and it's not always about getting credit no, I, no, you're right. Though. You're right. Man. You know what I'm saying? And so that's just the that's just the reality of it, you know, because um, our reward, all of our rewards is going to be in heaven, you know. No, I guess when I was when I'm saying the credit, I'm really just thinking like if I had to pick a role, right, if I, I'd rather be like like in your Radio Shack example, the guy who doesn't have to report back, who can like thrive in, in, in the ways that I can thrive without the responsibility. And I guess like I don't know, like. That's that perspective on marriage is, I think, something that like should be more common. Like, well, I, well, maybe everybody wouldn't prefer that role per se, but I, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, absolutely, I think, absolutely, because it's a it's a it's a tough role. Yeah, and it's not it's not it's not easy, and God is not calling us. And, and you know, uh, being a wife is a tough role. Of course, you know. Uh, but I, I think that uh, God is calling us all to to. The difficult things. That's just the reality of it, you know? Um, but I think that a marriage is easier when both husband and wife are operating their role together. We see, because it's, it's only, to me, it's only hard when two people are not on, on, not on the same page. Because it's like trying to make a square block fit into a, a circle hole. Yeah. And it's like when both people are doing what they have to do, it's kind of like, I remember around year three, four, it started to get better. In year five, it was like, we just came together. No, you know, year four, it's like, wow, okay. Now we're moving at like one piece. And this is so easy now. Mm. And my leadership is easy. And the way you're able to submit to me is easier. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so like, it's, it's, it's only difficult. And, you know, and then a lot of the reward that you're looking for, comes in marriage i remember when our sex life got better i'm like oh i don't need to get rewarded by the world this can be my only reward I, you know what i'm saying this is this is what i <laughs> oh, wow. this, this is what i need you know what i'm saying because your wife you know as i lead her better and as she becomes more sub submissive to my leadership she loves me more i love her more and then our marriage becomes more healthier and better and then it starts to be like okay this is what god Man, and so this is making me, I'm really learning a lot right now, right? So then, so like, so, so like uh, thinking about this, right? Like, I wonder then if, 
And you said something that was very interesting too, like on, on your podcast, you were, you basically were saying like how a lot of men have probably met many qualified women that could potentially be their wives and have just like moved past them based on like, maybe not like being true to themselves about like what their intentions are with dating. Right. And I think that, um, I wonder, right. If like right now, a lot, a lot of us are looking for like this work that you're describing to be almost like done pre-marriage versus like being done within a marriage and like mm -hmm. what, and it sounds like what you're describing is like, yeah, like you can't, you almost can't get to that point of like, like you said year four when it really kind of like started meshing in. And I'm like, it almost sounds like uh, certain things that you may expect to like get there during dating might not even get there until you're married. Nah, man. That's why I tell people all the time. What prepares you the best for marriage? Getting married. <laughs> Cause it's like, man, like, one, you have to understand that people are continually growing. So who I married when I was, you know, eight years ago is not the same person. And so that person is 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 is, is growing. You're also um, it, like bringing things out of them that they never even knew was there. Yeah. And so you have to deal with that. And so like it's a it's a it's a growing together that that you that you that that helps you learn and grow. And so yeah, like being like engaged and, and dating it's cool but when you get married it's a whole nother ball game you know it is it really is and then there's also the family point too right and i think for me like and even people who aren't believers when they think about like their life long term and they think about well i do want a family i do want to you know bring a new usher a new generation into the world would you agree that like a marriage is like a, a great a great benefit of marriage is the fact that like it's probably the best way to raise a family Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it's God's design. It's God's design. Statistically, um, children grow up more healthy and whole when they have both parents in the home. It's just like when a father is absent, you know, that's why the African-American community in a lot of ways um, is in the state that it's in. It's because I think this country in a lot of ways worked hard to, re to remove the male out of the house. You know, to just be honest. And so... When the when the when the when one or two is missing, that family structure will struggle. Yeah, and so like I think that, uh, yeah, having both parents is just my, me and my wife. We both grew up in single parent homes. Our mothers raised us, and our kids. We just seen like growth, and our and our kids growing to a, a maturity at ages that we that we didn't. Because we have, they have their family structure. And then, so that's interesting too. So like with you and your wife growing up in single family homes, do you think that someone with, who didn't necessarily grow up seeing like marriage uh, should like take on mentors that are married? Or do you think that even just like being a Christian and, and just following those principles is, could guide you? Like what, what, what should somebody in that situation, like how should they approach it? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think that for me, um, yeah, so by the grace of God, when I first started to pursue my wife, we had a lot of married couples who, well, not a, we had like three or four married couples who we gleaned from, and not, my pastor and his wife discipled us or whatever, um, but it's still not going to get you prepared for marriage, um, and it's still not going to get you prepared for raising kids and raising a family, um, and so... I remember my aunt, who's very wise, very wise um, lady. She's she's my my um, she's my 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 father's sister, and uh, she told me one day. She said, um, and she was getting this before I had my first child, and I was nervous. I was like, oh, I'm I'm gonna damage my kids, kind of how you know. <laughs> I feel like in some ways that my my dad my dad not being there damaged me, and I think we naturally have this fear of raising kids because. The only thing that we have to 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 glean from is our childhood and how our mm. parents affected us. And she sat down and she said something. She gave me some of the best advice. And this this woman, she, she her her wisdom is just it comes from another place. And she said, "I'm gonna tell you a story." And I sat down on the couch and she said, um, "She said your great grandfather." Uh, she said your great grandfather. 
did not have his mom and his dad in his life. He never knew his he never knew his parents because his parents his parents was born slaves. And she was like, I said all that to say this. Your grandfather looked at his father, but felt and and then and, and, and thought he was be, and being a good father because he wasn't doing what his father did to him, but ended up failing your father. Your father looked at his father, thought he was being a good father to you, but ended up failing you. He said, she said, you're not going to be a good father if you if you're always looking at what men did and don't and 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 and, and not looking at Jesus. Mm. She said, look at Jesus for the example. That's the mistake that they made. Because looking at flawed men and how they failed you are not going to teach you how to be a good father. Looking at Jesus, the perfect example, is going to teach you how to be a good father. And so I, I feel like that. I yeah. feel like I kind of broke that. And now I'm able to minister to my father in ways and love him and 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 forgive him in ways that he couldn't forgive his father and vice versa. And so I said all that to say this. I know it was a long story, but it's good. Look for God to be the example. That's great, man. Because Look there's always going to be example. blind spots. There's, 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 there's always going to be blind spots. Always going to be blind spots. And when she told me that story, I sat down. I was like, wow, that's so true. And so now I feel like, you know, my parenting, is just, it just hits different. Because I'm not, I'm not looking at, oh, my father did this. I'm going to make sure. I, it's like, no, nah, I'm going to look to Jesus. And I love that because it, I think it's encouraging that in the sense of like every it, well, in one it, it does a, it does a couple of things. I think one it highlights the fact that everybody is a limited resource, and um, mm -hmm. you may some may be a little more prepared than others, but to your point, no one's ever fully prepared for marriage. And the only way to kind of really fill up that gap of wherever you're missing is to connect with Jesus versus. Um, gleaning from whatever life experiences you have alone. Absolutely. So I love that. I love that. I love that. Well, our last question then, do you, do you think there's anything that like was shocking that like you just like did not expect before you were married that when you got married, you're like, Oh, like, well, yeah. Like, like, like before you got married, you had a certain ex set of expectations mm -hmm. after being married. Do you think there was like anything that was like, just like extremely shocking about like, that shattered maybe like your expectations of marriage. And you talked about it a couple to be honest, but anything that you think you left out or. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh yeah. Please. Yeah. Did you have anything? I mean, I believe in good energy. I believe in karma. And given this dating world today, where it's like, I am a, um, you know, financially stable man. I'm a, a eligible bachelor, <laughs> but given, like you said, which one thing I wanted to, I was going to ask before, but you were saying how before you're in a marriage, don't act like you're in a marriage, mm -hmm. but women today I think they want that like they want to feel like the man who they're dating or pursuing them should treat them like a wife so when you said don't act like you're in a marriage before marriage I guess what is the difference between what would you say if you would go back in time granted I don't know much of your story um and I hear about your story now. It's like yeah, I, I understand where you are right now, but yeah. if you go back in today, put yourself in the dating world right now, what would you do differently that would be showing that you're pursuing a woman, you want to take it to the next step, but not acting like she's your wife, like you said, like yeah, I think that, that um, I think what I what I would say is dating with intention, right? And so what I mean is like. Uh, letting the white, letting the, I think it's a difference between letting the woman know that you are open to, um, letting the woman know that you are open to seeing where this goes and treating her like she, you already said I do yet. I remember the Jackie said when she, when we were engaged, uh, she said, uh, uh, what, what did she say? She, when I got engaged to her, her mentor said, I know he just proposed to you, but don't walk around, start treating him like uh, you are, uh, like he's your husband until y'all say I do. She said, because what, what that will do is that will get your heart prepared for something that hasn't already happened yet. So it's not necessarily like trying to be strict, but it's about guarding someone's heart, right? Because... One thing we have to understand about women is that when they like you, they start imagining their wedding from the jump, kind of like what you said. 
And so one of the things, one of the the good, um, my, my, one of my good mentors said, I know you believe that she's your wife yet, but don't tell her. Like, sure, with your actions that you are ready to pursue her, but you ain't got to try to, like, you're going to be my wife, girl. You know what I'm saying? Um, because, one, anything, it's just a wisdom thing. I think anything can happen. You know, you might decide that, you know, she's not the one for you, yada, yada, yada. And then I think that it's just a wisdom thing. I believe, as a, from a Christian worldview, I believe that God is calling us to be pure and holy before marriage. And I believe that when people feel like they're husband and wife, they begin to start trying to act like they're husband and wife. And so, like, you know, um, and so, like, really being honest with those with those feelings and saying, man, I don't want to act like I'm husband and wife because I don't want to act like I'm husband and wife. You know what I'm saying? I want to, you know, I want to treat you according to what we've committed to, which is saying I do. You know what I mean? And so, like, that's just my own personal convictions, but I also think that, it's the wisdom that the Bible kind of points us to. Um, and so I hope that answered the question. You know what I'm saying? Because I think that women, they do want you to treat them like a wife before, you know. Um, and that's only because they want you to propose. <laughs> it's not, it's, 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 it's not, it's, it's not because uh, they're, they're okay with being treated like a wife when they're not a wife. It's like, no, they're, 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 ex they're physically expressing to you what they want that hasn't, that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, and so we got to keep that in mind too. And I like what you're saying because you're kind of also saying like you kind of can control the, the speed of which like you get to that point of being. Absolutely. And, and it kind of level set. So it's like. I don't want your heart to start doing something that hasn't happened yet. Yeah. And I think that's, I mean, because, I think. Yeah. Because it's just, it's, it's, it's one, it's, I don't think it's good. For for you to get a, a a woman revved up like she's your wife when she when she really isn't, um, and I think that marriage has its own laundry list of issues, and I think that's why a lot of marriages don't work, and they don't and they fail because it's like man, like when you get in this marriage, you're gonna see things are gonna be different, and so it's 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 another thing of treating somebody like a wife and acting like a wife. Y'all live in two different houses, and y'all get they'll have to sleep next to each other, and then when y'all get married actually become husband and wife. And it's like, it's not as easy, you know? And then it's like, did I make the wrong mistake? It's like, no, nah, you made the wrong mistake before you got married. So do you Treating think somebody like the your spouse? So do you think, okay, so we know for sure, like sex before marriage is something that you shouldn't like do biblically. We also have talked about living with each other. Do you think there's anything else that like falls within like the, you shouldn't be doing these things before you're married. Like I, like you'll see some girls be like, yo, I, you ain't getting husband treatment. If uh, if we not married, like I'm not doing the dishes, I'm not gonna be sweeping up your house like that. Yeah. Do you think there's anything else that falls in that list of uh, things that, like, yeah, you know, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, no. We, we, from, a, from a woman's perspective, or, or I guess both. I guess like, uh, no, I think it's fair. I think it's fair. You, you know? think that's fair? Like, uh, like, <laughs> like, 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 like. No, I think, I think, um, I think it's fair to a certain extent. I do think that it it, it is especially if you believe that God has called you to a particular person. I think it's, I think it's good for you to start displaying things that you like ways that you will be in a marriage. Yeah. I would say, I would say that I think that you should, you should, you should be strategic and when you share it, you know? Uh, but I've had women in the past, I first started dating them. They doing a whole bunch of stuff because what they want is marriage. But I'm like, I don't even know if this is really you, you know? Um, That's and right. so like, one, like, don't be bamboozled by, like, a woman doing a whole bunch of stuff because it might not be a reflection of who she really is. She just probably would just want to be married and, you know. But uh, but also, too, to add to that, I, I don't think that, um, I don't think that um, it's wise for us to start acting like married folks when we're, when we're not married. No, yeah. yeah I, I, just, I see. I, I, just, I, I see. I definitely see what you're saying. And, I, yeah. and I, what I like about that, too, and I think, what it speaks to with your relationship is you talked about like how you guys were friends before. Yeah. And I think that, um, right now, like when people are on podcasts or just talking about dating in general, you hear people talking about like the value that each partner could bring. Mm -hmm. And it's like tangible values. Like she knows how to do X, Y, and Z cook, uh, clean. Uh, she has a good job and all these different like tangible things that contribute to a relationship, which at times I think are important. But I think what you're touching on is like, something that is often left out of just the, the, the chemistry, the communication and the underlying friendship is probably like 
what needs the most like fostering initially yeah. in a relationship versus the Those. tangible things that really, if you think, when you're talking about the work that you're describing, can be worked on. You know what I mean? Like I think if you had a great relationship that started in friendship, and a, a a girl or a husband a husband who didn't want to do the dishes or a girl who didn't like cooking, those are minor things with a, a solid foundation that can be resolved. And, yeah. it's, and it sounds like that's really the focus, like focusing on the connection, focusing on the friendship on on the on the front end, yeah. and using the back end of marriage to kind of like work through. Yeah, because you can grow with all those things. Yeah, if, if that if those if those parameters are set in place, it's gonna be real difficult. Yeah. So a woman can learn how to how to cook. She can learn. It's not as easy as becoming like one with you, exactly, and friends. And so, like those secondary things, and I'm comfortable saying they're secondary things because a person can grow. I got a, you know, I have a, a friend. His wife don't cook at all, at all. He does all the cooking. Their marriage is really great, yeah. You know, because they're friends and they're business partners, and they and they and they, and they work well together. And so, like, work on the friendship part, like. Work on it. if you're not friends with your with your fiance or your girlfriend, become friends because that's gonna sustain you in the end. No, yeah, no, yeah. And when you're friends, there's like a like a lack like um less um like showing like you said like like just trying to perform and it's it you're yeah. getting to see that person Absolutely. for who they really are nah. without like yeah without the, without the extras and like with them being able to be honest and transparent without trying to feel like that to perform, which is good. Absolutely. So then, okay, is there anything else, though, that, that you think that, like, somebody who's not married should know about marriage? Like, is there anything else that you think, all right, like, you know what I mean? Man, I'll, I'll, <laughs> say, I'll say, man, what I said before, and I'll end with this. Okay. Um, if God gave us a spouse that met our every condition, we would never learn how to love unconditionally. That love is uh, is about sacrifice on both, on both parts. Um, but it's beautiful. It is beautiful when two people... Um, can come together and um, grow grow with one another. I think marriage ultimately, man, is a picture of the gospel, you know, and how like like me, I was I was talking to uh, uh, Kirk Franklin a couple of months ago, and we were we were talking about marriage, and I was saying, bro, like it seems as if like you and Tammy had such a great marriage, and he was saying. Um, how I didn't always start off like that. He was like, it was tough. And he was like, but like, we've been able to bless so many people, not by like the things that I've accomplished, not by my music, but, but just how we love one another. And I think that ultimately that's the aim, that's, that should be the aim of marriage, is how do we display to the world a beautiful picture of how Christ pursued his church and loved his church. And so like, that's one thing that I always have in mind. It's like, yeah, I want to love this woman and I want to love my kids, but I also want to want to show people Jesus. And I want young men to come around me and be like, man, why do you love your wife so much? And for me to say, I, I love my wife like this is because I was first loved like this, mm. you know. And I think that's the that should be the ultimate goal, you know, um, of 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 a union. And so if we don't have that in mind. I think that we need to uh, question why, why we want to get married. Boom, there we are, bro. Thank you so much. Yeah, I man. think you really, you really um, a pioneer out here. You know, man, like, I don't I'm know no too pioneer, many guys, bro. No, no, bro, bro, pioneer, <laughs> pioneer out here for real. I'm like, I'm trying to survive just like everybody else. Does. Yeah, but you, you, you're definitely doing like a lot, as especially as a husband and a leader. And I think that um, it's something that I know I learned a lot, and yeah. a lot of other people can glean from. So thank you. Appreciate you. Uh, oh, yeah, really appreciate.